the music retail show all right hey richard we're back for another episode of the music retail show yes. we've got a great yeah. guest today that's awesome going to talk guest. about a uh, yes. a great music group but hey listen first of all okay. i have got to ask you a question oh god all right here we go what do we, what man is it? what do you think one of your favorite TV shows of all Uh-oh. time is going Uh-oh. through the ringer because Lori Laughlin got busted <laughs> paying some people off to get Tell, her daughter into college. Okay. What do you think? Tell everybody what show we're talking about. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and before you do, uh, no no one can ask for my man card. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, I'll have to go with you that my family and I, we actually have watched all five seasons as well. Okay. So when calls the heart, come on, it's yes. all over the news. It's, it's awesome. everywhere. Yes. All this big varsity blues, big sting. I'm bummed out. But that, she's, you know, she's she's one of my favorite actresses. Um, I love the show. I've seen it probably the series like four or five times. Yeah. I watched some last night. I'm addicted to it. My kids I'm love it. Out. My yeah. kids love it. In fact, when uh, Jack ended up dying in season five, yeah. I mean, Spoiler uh, alert. Audrey was mad. She was yeah, upset. Yeah, I was mad too. We should have. We should add popcorn and watch it together. I know I was we should have. We should have. In fact, so. they want to watch season six, and it's all been suspended. But uh, you know what? You know what? I just thought I'd throw it out there and right, just see what right, you thought. Right. Well, we got a special guest. Introduce uh, our special guest, and we're going to get started because yeah. I'm excited. We have a lot of great questions, and we have a great guest. So. Well, I'm going to introduce. We got Alan McBroom. Uh, Alan, thank you so much for coming on, being part. Uh, we're going to talk uh, two parts. The first one about the independent music store owners. That's a mouthful. That's IMSO right. for short. And we're also going to touch on brick and mortar stores. You've been an owner for a while. We're going to let you talk about how long. Uh, so, Alan, thank you again. Uh, before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. I brought up you have a store. Tell us how long you've owned the store and give us a little bit of information on you. Well, I'm a pretty simple guy. There's not much to tell. Um, 62 years old. I like long walks in the moonlight. <laughs> oh, no, that's no different profile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I've uh, married for 38 years. Congratulations. I'll be 39. Awesome. Uh, still married to my first wife. And I've got two sons. They're both Eagle Scouts. I'm very proud of those guys. Yes. Uh, one is married and works for the uh, Department of Defense in Maryland. And the other one is wrapping up his master's program at University of Arkansas. Um, I come in and work at least five days a week. I actually wake up in the mornings thinking about, oh, boy, guess what I get to go do today. Yeah. And it's a good thing. Yeah, how um, did you how did you get so lucky? You got a beautiful bride and you got two wonderful kids. How'd you get so lucky? I don't know. If it if the world is all about karma, somebody somewhere else is really missing out. <laughs> <laughs> you stole it from them, huh? <laughs> no. Nah. I know you're proud of your boys and uh uh mm-hmm. man, you know, it seems like they are conquering the world and that's awesome. I personally uh enjoy uh your relationship with your wife from a distance. Um, it seems like you got a great marriage. You got a great wife. Uh, she off. She obviously can tolerate a whole lot. So um, you know, good for you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, she's. I really hit the lottery when she said she would marry me, and uh, her mother has said repeatedly, and her mom. Her mom's great. Love her mom to death. But uh, her mom has said repeatedly that she and. My wife's dad both gave our marriage about a year. <laughs> oh, really? Man. And uh, you were that bad, huh? That's the longest year in history, right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, congratulations was, too on your sons. I know I have a couple friends I I went to high school with that were Eagle Scouts, and it was always a big deal. It was always a yeah. a huge accomplishment that actually is stuck with them through today. So. Yeah. It is. Once you're being an Eagle Scout, once you're an Eagle Scout, you're always an Eagle mm-hmm. Scout. Yeah, I had uh, I had the extra privilege of being their scoutmaster. We had a we had a rule in our troop where if you're if you're an adult leader in that troop, you don't sign off any of your children's advancements. You don't sign off on their progress. Someone else does that. Yeah, smart. So yeah. I got to go with them everywhere, but I didn't sign any any of their advancement stuff. Yeah. Uh, got to be with them the whole time. I was also their uh, martial arts instructor. Yeah, tell us about that, because I like martial arts. Well, about 20 years ago, 
my wife was working on a red belt in uh, Kukiwan Taekwondo, hmm, which is traditional Korean Taekwondo. Yeah. And I asked her one day, I said, so, and, and Richard, you've seen my wife enough, you know a little bit about her, her, yeah. her personality. I said, do you really think you could defend yourself if you had to? And she said, well, yeah, I, I think so. She just earned, got to North Carolina and earned her red belt. And I said, well, let's find out. And she said, that's a bad idea. Let me preface the rest of this by saying I'm a slow learner. <laughs> <laughs> I got her to stand up. I reached just in, you know, gently reached for her throat. I didn't get halfway there. She spun, punched me in the gut, put me on the ground, knocked, knocked the wind out of me. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, that should have answered the question. I said, wait, I wasn't ready. Yeah, let me yeah. try it one more time. <laughs> I tried the same thing. She did the exact same thing, put me on the ground again. And that was about 20 years ago. And at that point, I said, I had better go learn this Taekwondo stuff yeah. if I'm going to survive. And uh, now I'm a fourth degree black belt. My wife is a third degree black belt. Both my sons are black belts. Yeah. So it's all uh, everything that we have done, even though we have very different interests. Yeah. I like amateur radio. My wife likes to quilt. Uh, yeah. One son likes to paint. Another one is a uh, cybersecurity guy. Yeah. Uh, we have very different interests, but we have a lot of places where we intersect and do the same thing. That's really helped build the family. Yeah, that, that yeah. makes for a happy family. Absolutely. Yeah, I can see that. Well, that's awesome, man. I, I could sit for probably hours and uh, hear stories about your family because in the past, you, you know, you've talked to me about your sons and what they've got going on, and uh, uh, I think it's pretty awesome. So uh, w one day when you come down this way, we need to sit and – Maybe go out to dinner and, and just, just have some talk about that. That, that. that would be fun. Yeah, I like dinner. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Let's hop into the independent music store owners. I'm going to sure. refer them to as IMSO because that's what it's abbreviated as. Tell us a little bit about the IMSO group, uh, how long it's been around, and give us a little bit of information about it. It's been around about 15 years in one version or another. Um, at one time, there were two different groups. There was the music store owners, and there was the independent music retail association. Gotcha. The first one was a little more informal. The second was a little more formal and structured. So they combined forces in 2007, about 12 years ago. And <clears throat> they formed this one organization that is unlike any other organization I've ever been part of. It's very unique. We've got between three and four hundred stores who are members. Wow! Uh, we okay. have qualifications. Not not just anybody can join. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of the biggest chains, that, some of the large chains that you're familiar with, are not qualified really? to be members. To be a member, you have to be an independent store. You have to be brick and mortar. At least fifty percent of your income has got to come from brick and mortar operations. Gotcha. Um. If you have more than four locations, you can't join. Interesting. I didn't know that. So, even if yeah. you own those, even if you own 10 stores, like you had 10 locations, that's, that's beyond the qualification. Right. Gotcha. Right. What we're trying to do is we're trying to bring together small, independent, what I would call a mom-and-pop music store operation. Yeah. Because our needs and our concerns, while they might track somewhat with larger operations, our needs and concerns are somewhat unique to us. Mm. Uh, a single standalone store is going to have different concerns. So in, in terms of business, being a store with 10 locations that Eddie just mentioned, or say Guitar Center or Sam Ash, yeah. or something like that. Uh, and it also cannot be publicly traded company. It has to be privately held. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of, there seems to be some mystery and maybe some misconceptions about IMSO among the general MI population because you cannot go online and look us up and read about us. We exist online. We're at what we are, and this I hope hopefully this will dispel all the mystery. I want to dispel this on the front end. We are not a cover group for the Illuminati. <laughs> please tell me that's real that please tell me somebody is saying that <laughs> <laughs> no but uh, uh. 
what we what this is the IMSO is an online discussion forum, and it's populated by these three to four hundred stores. We are, uh, matter of fact, I was looking this morning. We have over sixty six thousand threads. Oh wow! Okay. <clears throat> 66,501 threads in this forum. Mm. That's a lot of discussion. There's a oh, lot yeah. of conversation. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> a lot of conversation. And we talk about anything and everything that uh, that relates to what we're to the music store operation. Um, we talk about products. We talk about suppliers. I'm looking at the site right now. Yeah. Uh, school band and orchestra advertising promotion of special events sales tax tactics techniques uh, best business practices uh, we discuss all the third party platforms you know these are all things that we do that we talk about that benefit us one of the first things I remember was uh, I had been a member of the IMSO for a short period of time and I had this one thing that just perplexed me. How in the world do you display gig bags? Doesn't seem like that would be a thing. I mean, you put them on display, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're floppy. You know, it's like trying to display inner tubes. How do you do it? Yeah. And some guy, it was brilliant. He had a big dowel mounted in the store somewhere with shower hooks. Shower curtain hooks. Oh, that's oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. It's ready through the zippers on the uh, gig bag and then hang them, you know, like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a well, I had idea. an old T-shirt rack in the back that we had retired years earlier. I said, let's repurpose it. We didn't use that word then. But we dragged <laughs> it up front, and sure enough, we could put about 35 gig bags on this one rack. It takes up almost no, no footprint on the floor. Yeah. And they're not getting dirty. Yeah. That's well, interesting. That's a, that's a good idea. It's a great idea. But this came out of the IMSO. Uh, the reason this, I said this was a very unique group, it is. Here are these hundreds of stores who, I guess, technically are competitors with each other, but they don't act like it. If you've got a problem, if you've got a concern, if you have a question, you go into this forum and say, hey, um, uh, I'm getting ready for uh, an audit next week. Uh, my accounting firm wants to do an audit. Uh, what should I be looking for? How should I prep? Half a dozen people are going to chime in and say, oh, okay, we'll do this, this, and this. Get these records ready. It'll save you a lot of time and yeah. money. Somebody will say, I just lost my guitar line because they now want $20,000 this year to re-up. Yeah. I know none of you have ever heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been known to happen. Yeah. You know, our favorite old guitar line we've had for decades now will twenty thousand dollars in the first quarter to re up. Yeah. Gee golly, what do I do? Yeah. And it's amazing the answers that they get. Some of them are let's say uh outside the box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of them are change companies. Yeah, yeah, sure. That that's interesting. That's interesting because uh, I'm sitting here as you're talking, wondering how many people monitor these conversations, and even greater than that, what to what um, uh, interaction do you get from other members in? So, are you said 600 members? I mean, do you have 600 oh. people chiming in, or is there a smaller percentage, or? Between three and four hundred members. Yeah, three oh, three. Or, I'm sorry, yeah. three or four hundred members. I apologize. Yeah. He's running for politics. That's he, right. He thinks he's telling the truth. You got to double everything. <laughs> <laughs> Cut your revenue in half and double your support base. Right. Yeah. That's exactly. right. That's right. There are thirty or forty core members. I guess we call them. Mm -hmm. uh, the regulars. They check in every day or every other day. Uh, you can look to see which threads you've not responded to or you've not read. And those guys chime in all the time. And by the way, I use I use the term guys as a non gender specific sure. yeah. word. You know, guys and gals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of wisdom there. I mean, we've got guys in this group like Jim DeStaffney, who was a NAM board member. He's awesome. Oh, sir. He's awesome. I love Jim. Yeah, he owns Blues Angel down in mm -hmm. Pensacola. Yeah. We got Gordy Wilcher from yeah, Owensboro Music in Kentucky. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Loy, Paradise Music up in North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, they're just, there's a lot of wisdom in that group. Yeah. So if you have a problem or, or a question, you get in there and you ask these questions. Uh, something that I learned, and you would think at my age I would know a little bit, but the more the older I become, I realize the less I know. Yeah, uh, I understand. It's funny how that works. One of Yeah, one of the uh, members was talking about, well, this particular vendor wants, you know, a really large sum of money to re-up this year. And yeah. we're a small store in a small town in a financially disadvantaged part of our state. Yeah. It's a common store. Uh, what do I do? I mean, good golly, I can't, I'm going to have to drop these guys. And one of the members chimed in and said, no, don't drop them. Tell them no. Tell them you would love to keep the line, you'd like to support them, but they've got to live in the real world. You'll re-up with one-third of that and make a goal to hit the total amount by the end of the year. Yeah. But realistically, for everybody, that's what works. Yeah. I it, did it, and it worked. I agree with you because years ago when I worked in retail, we had uh, one of the big major companies come to us. I'll never forget it. It was one of the greatest learning experiences I had. There was They came out with a certain series of guitars that was not good in the market. And I'll never forget, like this piece of paper, the rep slid it over to the owner and said, we filled out your order for you. You know what he did? He slid it back. And he said, no. And if you don't like it, you could take all this product and get out of the store. Or you can take my money, which I've never been late, never bounced a check. And I wow. promise you that I will hit numbers, but I'll hit numbers in the area that I know I can sell the product. So what you say, I absolutely agree that the manufacturers need to understand. We all need to work together. I'm not picking on the manufacturers, but we all need to work together and say, hey, in my area, my demographics, I can do this and I can do it really well. So I get that. Um, the, the, another scenario, and, and uh, uh, I'll be brief with this, is manufacturers, some of them say, man, I've cut some of the bottom 20% off, and we've actually uh, uh, we've, we've, we've made more money this year. And so there's a double-edged sword out there. How do you combat that? I mean, how do you deal with that as a, as a store owner? Do you not even think about that and say, hey, we have to look at our bottom line and if I can make money doing it, and if, if somebody says I have to do something, I'm going to counter, which I think is smart, and counter and say, this is what I can do. What do you think? Back in the day, uh, before NAFTA, before intense importation from China and other Asian manufacturers, we had a small handful of major guitar manufacturers. Yeah, yeah. And you can name them as well as I can. There's no point in enumerating them here. But those manufacturers controlled the market. They dictated what stores could stay open and which ones couldn't by allowing them to have product or not. Yeah. Well, with the advent of CAD CAM manufacturing and all these different things, uh, you've got a lot more manufacturers out there now yeah. Small manufacturers, hungry manufacturers, mm -hmm. who make great product. Yes, I agree. And I have learned, especially here in our store, you don't have to have one of the big three or one of the big five, however you'd like to uh, make that delineation. You don't have to have one of the big companies to do well. Yeah. You don't. There's great product out there, yeah. amazing product uh, that you can buy in stock. Now, you'll have to work a little bit harder. You'll have to educate the public. Yeah. But when you hand them a guitar that costs, let's say, three ninety nine, and it plays good, it sounds good, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. it's got a good warranty, and they go to a big box store to see a similar guitar with a well known name on it that's twenty two hundred. Who are they going to buy from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they're buying based off name, they're going to buy from the box store. Yeah. If they're buying based off what they feel, what they hear, what they see, what they feel, they're going to buy from me. Yeah. And, man, and retailers just like me mm -hmm. who say, I don't have to have that. Uh, there's a little bitty guitar company that I've never heard of about a year ago 
one of my reps walked in and said, man, I want you to look at this guitar. I'm like, I don't want to see another Asian guitar. Just don't. He said, no, really. You want to see this. Okay. And I looked at it, and I was knocked out. I mean, the, the build, quality, the everything about this guitar screamed, you can sell me. <laughs> now, we don't, well, Alan, let me interrupt you. We don't normally get into a lot of names, but I want to hear the name of this company because it's a positive thing. And uh, my guess is it's going to be AMI. No. No. Okay. I was although, wrong. Although there are a lot of, there's a lot of good uh, discussion about AMI and IMSO. Yeah. There's a bunch of acronyms. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> a little guitar company is called Tagima. T-A-G-I-M-A. Yeah. Uh, are they from Spain or? Uh, I don't know. I think so. Yeah, I but, think the, the well, owner's from... Their, their owner's from Spain, but I think they make them overseas. But anyways, yeah. go ahead. There, yeah, that's there it. it is. propaganda right here. Yeah. <laughs> and I was knocked out by it. Yeah, and their electrics it, are off the charts. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I did, yeah. pull, I did not pull the string on it. Last NAMM show I went to, what booth do I see? Tagima. Yeah. And... One of my friends bought Tagima at the NAMM show, and he's just gushing about the quality of these guitars. Yeah, I agree you know, with him. Price point. And yeah. they're selling well for him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, uh, he has a real interesting process. He buys them from the company, hangs them on the wall, sells them to someone else, and then buys more. Yeah. <laughs> That's a novel idea. You know, I kind of yeah, like that, I like you it. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Inventory management. Yeah. Inventory management. Oh, uh, something I've been noticing. Can I bring up a topic that's not on your list? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We're just talking. Something I've been noticing, and it really bugs me. Uh, we've got a couple of guitar manufacturers that we love dearly. Yeah. Who will not produce sales propaganda for us to distribute to our retail clientele. I've got one guitar manufacturer who produces a fantastic catalog, full color. I mean, this is, this is a uh, Madison Avenue quality stuff. Yeah. It didn't do this on a PC in the back room. This is a great, slick, beautiful catalog, you know, real guitar porn quality photographs. Yeah. And I've got a couple of others who are, well, they're not the big, big boys, but they're bumping that arena. They won't even produce a brochure. How are we supposed to sell their product when they won't? I mean, if you go to uh, the appliance store and you're looking at a washing machine, I guarantee you the salesman has a brochure to hand you on that line of appliances. Yeah. Yet I'm here selling a guitar that costs roughly the same, and they can't pony up 13 cents for a brochure. Yeah. Have you run into that? Well, I, I and I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer, but I wonder, this is just a wonder, if they own the company or they just distribute it. That's something that's common in today's climate where a lot of companies are distributing the product. I know for a fact that their margins are very, very thin. I wonder if they have the budget to do that, you know, because oftentimes what I hear is go to our website. I don't know if that's what you hear. So I don't know what the answer is. Um, I agree with what you're saying. And, and, and then on the flip side, I don't know if it's they're trying to be uh, new and hip and uh, everything's online and the new generation, that's how they're doing it. I, I really don't know what that answer is, but I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I have found, uh, to turn it back over to you, that a majority of these companies, they only <coughs> distribute, they don't own the product. I don't know. That's the case in one of these instances. Uh, and the guy there that I talked to said, oh, everything's on our website. Yeah. Yeah. I said, great. So if you come into my store as a retail customer, yeah. what I'm supposed to do is say, go to the oh, website. Remember this website domain name. Okay. Make sure you remember it. I don't have anything printed to give you. But remember this domain name. And when you get home, instead of doing your laundry or putting up the groceries, before you forget the name, go get on your computer and spend a lot of time looking up things on this website. And if you have a question, go back and read the website. Yeah. How's that going to work? Well, I, I think the biggest problem for me, I understand with what you're saying, I think the biggest problem is they are not valuing the brick-and-mortar store. They just want to sell a guitar. So they say if you go to a website, 
they may pull up one of the big box stores and they may buy it from a box store and they don't care. They still sold the product. It's, sold. it's yeah. either through them or through you. They don't care. And for me, yeah. I have a real problem with that because in my thought <laughs> is if you pump the money into brick and mortar and spread that advertisement around, you're going to get a sale on the grassroots level. And like yeah. you said, put something yeah. in their hand and occasionally they're going to go online and buy it. But the rule is that, they're, that they have an emotional attachment with not only this piece of paper, but with you. And they're going to come back and see you. I wish that's what manufacturers did. Most people, I think, want to dance with the one who brung them. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. You know, and that at least gives us the edge. We've been doing this all. Uh, when May 3rd comes this year, we will have been selling guitars for 41 years. Wow. Yeah. And Congratulations. We've seen a little bit. Uh, we like the guy in the commercial. We know we know a lot because we've seen a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We know a little bit and we've seen a lot. But just the whole, uh, the nature of our product delivery has changed. Yeah. There's been uh, consolidation of businesses into large umbrella corporations. Yeah. Uh, some of our manufacturers are now headquartered in Canada, which in and of itself is fine. Yeah. Except you get into uh, uh, currency transfer fees. CITES. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, yeah, CITES. Oh, gosh. What, what a disaster. <laughs> Oops, I shouldn't have brought that up. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll need to go another hour just on that. But but it's, uh, but one thing, okay, I'm, I think the, the CITES treaty is well-intentioned. Yeah. Great. Let's save the planet. I'm all for it because I live here. Yeah. But, including Rosewood. Rosewood is Silly. highly sustainable, especially from India. Absolutely. But one of the good things, if we're going to find a silver lining, and I like to find silver linings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The silver lining is it has forced manufacturers to find alternate materials. Yeah. I'm now getting fingerboards may have something called Chechen, which is also called Caribbean rosewood. It's not a rosewood species. Yeah, I've stubbed my, a, uh, my toes and said that a few times. Yeah, <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm just kidding. But Chechen is a fantastic hardwood. I'm getting some black walnut. Yeah, black yeah. walnuts popping up. <clears throat> I'm getting some other hardwoods now as fretboard material. And y'all, it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Any Chechen walnuts, gorgeous. Is smooth as ebony. It's yeah. beautifully colored. It's more colored than rosewood. Uh, I don't know what the cost factor is on it, but oh, yeah. uh, I'm getting new USA made custom-built guitars from a really great manufacturer. I, I wish I could say their name. Say it. What's their name? G&L. Oh, okay. There you go. All right, good. The G&L boys, brother, they got it going on. Really? They are they are building fantastic guitars. They've got the Tribute Series, which is their Indonesian build. Yeah, yeah. which I've, I've heard great things about. Oh, man. The fit and finish is fantastic. Yeah. They I'll take great. that over all... Uh, I'll take that over some of the American lookalikes any day. Yeah. And their USA custom shop, they don't have UPC codes because everything's custom built. Everything is one of a kind. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. This, check this out. Check this out. I had this gentleman <laughs> from a nearby state. Yeah. He's 78 years old. And he came in. He w- had a piece of paper with a bunch of details written on it. He said, I want to see, can you build this guitar, this bass for me? Yeah. Sure, we'll get GNL to build it. Uh, had all the specs. How much will it cost? Well, I did. I did a little math, and I called my guy GNL to make sure I had my numbers right. I said, "Well, it's going to be sixteen fifty, a thousand six hundred fifty dollars." Wow. He said, "You want all the money now, or do you just want half of it?" I said, "Either one." Yeah. He also then said, "I can't stand up and hold a bass for four hours like I used to." Yeah. I want it to be as light as possible. Yeah. So this mammoth bass shows up in a version of seafoam green. Oh, hmm, cool. Which is just dropped dead gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. Black, black pearl inlays on the maple fretboard. Oh, that oh was good. Good. We put it on the triple beam scale. He wanted the lightest body he could get. Guess what that bass weighed? Six pounds. Not too far off. 7.1. For a wow. base, that, that is light. That is incredible. Yes. And it, I mean, it's the size of a jazz bass. Yeah. Wow. And the man said, gosh, I'm going to have to put something on this so it won't float away. Yeah. <laughs> it was 
white and was so beautiful. Awesome. And then he told us the rest of the story. He had gone to a, a one of the one of the big big manufacturers. Yeah. And asked for the exact same base out of their custom shop. Can you see that? Oh yeah. Seven thousand dollars. Oh man. Oh. Ouch. He was so happy. I mean, the man was like a was like a teenager after his first date. Man. He was, he, he was so happy. I'm going to go buy a base. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one experience made my entire month. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a when great story. When you've got story. somebody who takes their hard-earned money, Richard, and they come in, they say, I'm going to give this to you, and I want you to give me joy in return. Yeah. And I give them joy that exceeds even my expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How can you not be in love with a company like that? Well, it makes you it makes you happy that you're a, a music store owner, right? Yeah, it does. And yeah. you know that really, uh, that's what we come in for yeah. every day. We come in. I got a friend I talk to on amateur radio every night on the way home because I got one in my truck. And now, I'm on the way home. now, now, let me interrupt you. Explain what that is to anybody listening. You're into ham radios, right? Yeah. Okay. That's all. Uh, well, it's amateur radio. Uh, we have. Each of us hold a, a license from the FCC. Yeah. It lets us get on the public airwaves and actually have two-way conversations with people locally and people on the other side of the planet. Wow. But this friend of mine, uh, he's homebound, and he's an amateur radio operator. I talk to him every night on the way home. And he said, he, he, every single night, he asked me the same question. He says, did you sell any guitars today and make the world a better place? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I get to say yes or no to that yeah. every day. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm selling the guitar, I'm thinking about my friend Steve. I'm thinking, I want to tell him I made the world a better place. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the good thing is he doesn't ask you if you sold a banjo and made the place a, or the world a better oh, place. Because <laughs> I, I disagree with him, you know. But uh, anyways, I'm just kidding. So... <laughs> Well, Alan, talk to us about, you're the president of IMSO now, so congratulations for that. And uh, tell us what kind of what your role is uh, uh, being the president. Well, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an online forum. Yeah. Uh, so there's no retirement package. There's no slush fund that comes with that. Before. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, Basically, just keep the ship of state sailing in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, I manage the website. Uh, I manage the forum. Uh, I take care of all the uh, internet related anything that's got ones and zeros attached to yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, that's my job. And uh, we have a board. We have a board. We have a board that's uh, you know pretty diverse. Yeah. And uh, if we make any kind of significant change, the board's got to sign off on it. Okay. And they're a great, great bunch of guys. Yeah. Great guys. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if, if there's going to be a, a people out there listening, store owners listening that have never heard of IMSO, what, what can you say to those people that are, hey, this is a reason why you should come to us and, and become a member? What are some of the benefits uh, for those people out there listening of being an IMSO member? The number one reason, if you're an independent music store owner, you need to know that you're not alone. Yes. You're not by yourself, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. You go on the IMSO forum, you don't even have to ask questions. You don't have to be an active participant. Yeah. But if you get in there and read the forums, you're going to find questions other people have asked. Maybe questions you should have been asking but didn't know to ask. Yeah. Yeah. And if I was a new music store owner, this would be the saving grace of my operation. To go in there and read the things that don't work and the things that do work. And sometimes you just want to go vent. Yeah, you sure. We've all got that one person we can go vent to in our lives, you know. They're not going to judge us, <laughs> we hope. Yeah. But we can go vent to them and they'll listen and then we feel better. The problem is, if you're an MI store owner, nobody understands what you do but another MI store owner. Yeah. We have a forum in here called other very other it's called various assorted topics. And if you just want to vent, if you had the customer from Hades today, and you had his cousin yesterday, and you just need to go in and release a little venom, you can do it there. It's perfectly safe. Nobody's going to judge you. A few people may say, "I've been where you've been. I feel your pain. I had the guy last week." 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, to keep things, I'm sure if, if you're not careful, and this is maybe something that you guys monitor, uh, you've kind of got to be careful with that to some degree because it could turn into a, a negative type board. And I don't, I don't feel like that's, that's what it's about. So do you guys oh, wow. monitor that and occasionally say, all right, all right, everybody's kind of got to pipe down a little bit. Let's stay it on a, on a positive track or, or does it just naturally take care of itself? Ninety nine and a half percent of the time, it naturally takes care of itself. It's organic. Yeah. The uh, the enthusiasm, the joy, the happiness is organic yeah. on that forum. Yeah. If you're having a bad day, go read the forum. Your day's going to get better. Yeah. If you want to start your day off in a good mood, get a cup of coffee, spend half an hour reading new posts in the forum, and if nothing else, getting other viewpoints from other people get you excited. Yeah. 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 I mean, there are a lot of great things you can do. Here's a here's a flash. And Richard, you're gonna love this. There are a lot of great things you can do with no money. Yeah, oh absolutely. <laughs> and all these guys, I mean, we do a we do a, a really successful promotion every spring and we call it spring cleaning day. Okay. Essentially we uh we have like a uh, music related garage sale out in our parking lot. I'm glad yeah. you're bringing this up. And we invite all the local musicians. If you've got anything music-related and it's family-friendly, bring it. We're going to play music outside. It doesn't cost a dime to participate. Yeah. What it costs us is donuts and coffee. Yeah. But we will have 100 or 200 people show up in our parking lot, and they sell stuff to yeah. other musicians. Then they've got money in their pocket, and they're standing right next to our store. Absolutely. I think this is a good. I think this is a good formula. Mm-hmm. I I agree. I like this idea. I agree 100% with you. And one thing that I run into is there's a lot of people that's afraid. But uh, you told me, I don't know how many years ago that you were doing it. And I thought it was one of the best ideas that I've ever heard. Because I think we need to embrace stuff like that and draw traffic to us. However, if it's a safe environment, they're going to buy and sell uh, anyways. You might as well come in your parking lot. Because like you said, when they're done, they got a pocket full of cash and they got a, a music store sign flashing going and they go in there. What do they want? They want more gear, right? Well, in the interest of full disclosure, I got this idea from reading the IMSO forums. Oh, Gordy okay. Wilcher, Gordy Wilcher in Owensboro, Kentucky does something like this. Okay. Yeah. And I read that. And I said, that's brilliant. There's nobody here doing that. Let's do it. Hey, yeah. Alan, let's yeah. not give him credit. We're going to keep the credit here. I'm just kidding. Gordy's a good guy. <laughs> Gordy's a stand-up guy. Now, if you want to know some things about MI, talk yeah. to Gordy. Yeah. He has forgotten more than most of us will ever learn. I agree. I agree. What a what a what an enthusiastic, uh, forge ahead kind of guy. You know, yeah. Dad, Dad gummed the torpedoes. Yeah, full speed ahead. That's yeah. that's Gordy. Yeah. Well, embracing the community, I think, is always a big deal. I think a lot of times people have a hard time doing that. Maybe they have a fear of trying to connect with outside their store or they feel like maybe it's something they can't control. But obviously if you can embrace things like that, man, I think it's only going to kind of catapult your influence within the community that they, people know they can trust you, that you can come in and, and have a great experience. Well, it's a safe place. Yeah. It's a safe place where musicians feel like, Hey man, I'm going to go down to backstage music and, uh, or Owensboro music. And I'm going to, I'm going to sell my gear and uh, it's a cool place to hang out. Mm-hmm. And then it may be four months down the road. They want something. What do they think about? They think about you. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's a win-win. I love yeah. the idea. Yeah. You should, you know, every music store should be trying something. Yes. If it doesn't work, brother, it ain't the end of the world. Yeah. Try Just something different. Do it again. Yeah. Or try it again in a different way or try a different time of the year. Yeah. But try something. Absolutely. Uh, here's a bold idea. Ask your best manufacturers to give you some gear to give away in the store. Absolutely. We do something called Play Me, Win Me. And it's really simple. I print everything right here on, on the computer, in my, on the printer in my office. It's very simple. we got a little sign next to a new guitar. You can enter to win this guitar, but in order to enter, you have to play the guitar. Mm. Okay. You can't enter online. And you can enter once a day. We'll run this thing for six weeks. We have guys who will come in every single day on their lunch hour for six weeks 
and play that guitar and drop their name in the bucket again. Wow. Hoping to win it. Yeah. I, I sell a lot of guitars to guys who came in to play the one that yeah. we're going to give away, and they fell in love with another one. Yeah. Or when they didn't win the guitar, <laughs> this is great. They don't win the guitar. They come in and say, have you got one just like it I can buy? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like, like so much, I feel like I feel like it's mine. Oh, sure. There's yeah. one right here. There's two right here. Yeah. You get to have your pick. That's so awesome. Ask them, what are they going to do? Say no. You're, you're already at no. And that's not a problem. Yeah. Ask them to give you something. And if they say no, call your other provider. Yeah. Absolutely. And say, you know, I'm going to put somebody's guitar over here to sell. Mm-hmm. I mean, to give away. I'm going to put somebody's instrument up here to give away mm-hmm. yeah. and draw people into my store to increase my foot traffic. It can be yours, and I'll have your name all over social media. People are going to talk about it. They share those kind of posts. Oh, yeah. If you want to get people excited about your product in my area, give me something to work with. Yeah. You know? It doesn't have to be product. I mean, it can be anything. Uh, here's something we did. We uh, we buy Martin Strings uh, through one of our distributors. Yeah. And uh, they had a promotion last year where if you bought X number of strings, you got a free hoodie. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's great. Instead of me wearing the hoodie, some beautiful lady walked into our store, and I handed her the hoodie, and I said, would you model this for me? Let me get a picture. Yeah. I was, I felt very creepy. I felt, I felt, <laughs> <laughs> but she was delighted. She said, sure. So she just, this, this lovely brunette lady puts it on. She's got a beautiful smile and I snap her picture. I say, I want to use your picture to promote this on Facebook. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what we did, <laughs> I'm going to Facebook after this. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it twice. Yeah. We've done it twice with two of these hoodies. And here's how the game works. It's absolutely free. All you have to do is like the picture. Okay. Yeah. Like the picture on Facebook. That's all you have to do. And in a week's time, we're going to pick some random number and count down into likes. And if you're that random like, you get the hoodie. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. That's a good idea. Excellent. Doesn't cost anything, does it? Yeah. It costs nothing. Somebody gave us the hoodie. But it's a beautiful, I mean, it's a very nice dark, dark gray, yeah. like heather gray yeah. uh, hoodie with the Martin Strings emblem on the front. And people act like they've won the lottery. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Alan, do you think yeah. Do you think this is one of the biggest subjects on the forum that you guys that get in conversations is trying to do events like this or how do I drum up more business? Like, yeah, it's got to be a huge conversation within those 66,000 threads. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I was reading one yesterday. It piqued my interest. Uh, Dave Byers, guy who's got DC Music. Uh, oh, yeah. I know Dave Byers. Okay. <clears throat> Good guy. Straight up guy. Uh, Dave said, we're kind of late on the ukulele class train, but we're going to get on it. And he put the, posted this link to a video that he did promoting ukuleles and ukulele classes. It is absolutely, I've seen a lot of videos from a lot of music stores, but guys, I'm telling you, this is the slickest, simple, wonderful video that I've seen in a long time. Yeah. It's very matter of fact, the production quality was super high. The editing was super great. And I was staring at it, and all of a sudden, all my efforts seemed juvenile. So I, I, I asked Dave in the forum, asked him one question, what kind of camera are you using? What camera is that? Because if I can afford it, I want that camera. He's probably using his phone. Uh, I've got to get his phone then. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what you run into in the forums. It's all this unexpected stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, we do a lot of little videos here. Uh, they're, they're kind of homespun. I think they're hokey. I get a lot of nice words on them. Uh, people compliment them. But uh, I had a young man come in uh, a couple of weeks ago and bought a guitar from us. And he said, I want to tell you I love your videos. Oh, good. Mm, excellent. And I was thinking, gosh, you got to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You did say you're in a small town, huh? <laughs> we're in a small, yeah, we're in a small town. But it's a university town. We've got more people at the university than we do in our town. Wow. It's like 25,000 at the university. Wow. 
Wow. And I asked him, I said, are you being nice or do you really like the videos? He says, no, to the honest. Wow. All of a sudden, I felt better about our limited efforts at producing the video. They're mostly 30 seconds or less. Yeah. yeah. And they're very brief. Uh, but he said, honestly, when I see you in the still shot of the video, and you're holding up a sign that says, they owe money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How am I not going to watch that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good stuff. Man, I don't want to get uh, in in too deep because we, we're, we've we've done good uh, with some of the stuff that uh, we've brought up. But uh, talk a little bit about on the retail level. I, um, that's what we want to focus on um, with with some of the struggles. And and I know you've got a wealth of knowledge. And I and I want you to share some of the things, some of the tactics that anybody watching or listening would go, wow, that's a great idea. You brought up the parking lot. Uh, a sale that you did, which I think is is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, I use it all the time. I give you credit. Now I need to give Gordy some credit too. I didn't know it came Absolutely. from him, uh, but uh, I think it's brilliant. What's a couple other gems that you got? Because uh, I know with being in business this long, there's a <laughs> lot of struggling people out there that they just need a couple gems. What do you got for us? We when we get rain around here, it's torrential rain and it's. They may last for weeks, yeah. especially in the spring. You get it there, too. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we're having a really bad rain day, I'll post a picture of me standing out in the rain holding an umbrella. And I'll say something to the effect of, don't get wet. Call 323-3824. We'll come out and escort you in and keep you dry. Hmm. Now, I've never actually had anybody... I tell them they can call or they can halt three times. Yeah. You know, the universal signal for distress. Yeah, yeah. They can halt three times or they can call. We'll come out and get them with an umbrella and escort them in. Nobody's actually done it, but I put this on Facebook or Instagram and people talk about it. Yeah. You know, man, you're insane and that's great and I love it. Yeah. Uh, we do keep a big, uh, like a golf umbrella. Yeah. By the front door. And if it's raining and a lady's in the store, we go to the door and open up that umbrella and escort her out to her car, keeping her dry. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's a small thing. It's big. It's customer service. It's big. It's I excellent. like it. The impact it has on the customer is huge. Absolutely. Uh, they may never think about it again, but I just got to feel some of those ladies tell people, I actually ran into customer service today. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's another thing. Don't argue with people about returns. Just don't. We live in an uh, instant uh, cyber gratification world. If you make somebody unhappy, it's going to be on Facebook, it's going to be on the blog, it's going to be on Twitter, it's going to be somewhere in a few minutes yeah. mm -hmm. while they're hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And feedback from their friends, they're going to leave that up. The way you need to look at returns, look at it as marketing money. If somebody returns something and you lose 80 bucks because they destroyed it, but they're pretty sure, and you can tell they really think it's your fault, Yeah. take it back, eat the loss, chalk it up to marketing. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. And what you've just done, you smile, you say, man, I am so sorry this exploded and burned your house down. I am so sorry. Take it back. Sorry Here's about your house. Bucks. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And you give them their money back, and you're cheerful about it. Yeah. And then you reach over, and you pick up a little slip of paper. It's pre-printed. It's laying on the counter. that says, if you're happy with us, will you show us a little love on social media? Here are, here are our links for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. And you know what? People will go in and leave you... It used to be five stars on Facebook. Now it's called a recommendation. Yeah. They're going to give you a nice recommendation. They got no hassle. They got no pushback. They felt really good about bringing that thing back mm -hmm. because it was just the way they wanted it to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if they're not going to feel happy about what you sold them, they should at least feel happy about bringing it back. Yeah. Yeah. You've, here's the thing. You've got, Richard, you've got control of that. Yeah. You're the guy in charge. Yeah. 
It doesn't matter if you're the sales clerk or as Walmart calls them, sales associates. Yeah. Or or what your title is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you're the face of that store at that moment, yeah. Throw your policy out the window. I agree. Do what's common sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with you. Any policy, really the only policy a retail store ought to have is make the customer happy, make them glad they bought it, or make them glad they returned it. Yeah. That should be your, if, if it was within, anywhere within the realm of reality, do it. Yeah, yeah. Because they're going to brag, and then you ask them to talk about you on social media. Yeah. While yeah. they've got that warm, fuzzy glow. It's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. Alan, yeah. I've, uh, in the midst of all of that, and in the speed of the world that we live in with everything, you were talking earlier about, you know, the power of having a brochure, the selling power. And within IMSO, what do you guys talk about and how do you coach other stores how to deal with cell phones, walking in with the store, comparing prices? You know, some of these younger people that want to use that, people that want to use that as leverage to maybe get a better deal. How do you deal with that? What do you have to say? A few years ago, when we were still trying to make the transition to an Internet world, uh, people really got upset in the IMSO about showrooming. People would come in with their with their phone and look up the item number and look at the price on Amazon. Or they'd look it up on eBay. Or they'd look it up on the manufacturer's website. This kind of forced us to bring everything down to map. All of our posted prices now are map pricing. I don't care what it is. It's map. And the general thing now is encourage it. Yeah. Invite them to look at it. Yeah. This is the advice we're giving now in IMSO forms. Uh, invite them to do it. If I see somebody looking at a guitar tag, we, we print our own guitar tags. Uh, it's got a bunch of information about the guitar. It's got the manufacturer's number. It's got our number. Uh, you know, what's it built out of, that kind of thing. If I see them looking at that, and they got their phone in one hand and tag in the other, I'll walk over to them and say, why don't you just take a picture of that tag? That way, when you get home and you think about it, you can go back and see what our price is and you can see all the details. I encourage them to take photographs of our product tags. Yeah. People say, you got any, have, you got, uh, have you got somebody to write this down on? Well, you've got a phone in your pocket. Does it take pictures? Yeah, take a picture of the tag. Here, I'll hold it up for you. Yeah. Take a picture. Yeah. Because on every one of those tags is our logo in the bottom left-hand corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And our price is in big numbers in white against a dark background so they can see what our price is. And then I've still got to deal with the Internet sales tax thing, that, that disparity. Uh, Amazon's charging sales tax now. Uh, a lot of people are now. Reverb started charging sales tax in the state of Washington last week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I actually sold a base in Washington State the day they started it, and the guy called me furious that the week before when he looked at it, there was no sales tax. Last week, there was a sales tax. Yeah. What is that about? Why didn't you notify me? I said, well, I didn't know you looked at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Reverb didn't tell me. So I had to call Reverb, get the scoop, and call him back and explain it. I said, if you're in Washington State, you got to move to not pay sales tax. But eventually, they're going to do it everywhere. Absolutely. So you're kind of sunk if you want yeah. to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, you can't combat it. Yeah. You cannot do it. If they're going to buy one, they're going to buy one somewhere. You want to be in your place. Yeah, absolutely. So what are you going to do? You're going to walk up to them and go, don't be looking up other people in my store on your phone. Yeah. Well, people used to say that back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they used to. But you got to realize if the guy's in here checking stuff out and comparing prices, he's probably got some money to spend. Yeah. Yeah. If we have to, if we've got to deal with the no sales tax online issue, We've got a real simple fix. Buy it from us. Yeah. And our sales tax is 7%. If you buy from me on six different days, buy from me six different days, we're going to total up everything you spent and give you back 10% of that in store credit. Yeah. Hmm. Okay? Well, that's insane. That's nuts. 
you mean if I buy a set of Ernie Balls at six bucks, you're going to give me back 60 cents? We sure are. Yeah. yeah. That's nuts. Well, if you think about it, that offsets the online sales tax. Yeah. Yeah. No longer, you're coming out 3% ahead. But it makes them come back in the store five more times. That's right. Yeah. It, it, it really did get 10% back in actual money. Let's say you spent $600. They've now got actually $60 credit they can spend just like money. Yeah. But I bought the product wholesale. It doesn't cost me $60. It probably cost me 30 or 40 Yeah. So I can offer them 10%. I paid, I don't know, 5 or 6 Yeah. So I benefit, they benefit with a real 10% worth of money back. They come back in my store. I've had people get free guitars off their card. Wow. They'll buy the things six times and they get a free guitar. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Now, going back uh, to what Nate was bringing up about the phones, how many times do you think it's just a buyer that might be a little insecure because he just doesn't know and he doesn't want to get burned? And in, in my, my take of it is when I see somebody walk in and doing that, like you said, they have money, I do the complete opposite. I say, what can I help you with? How can I teach you, show you? Any questions? Let's let's hang out and talk about it because you got a live body there. And for me personally, it's great that you do a rebate on tax and you do do a lot of that. But I don't really care if it's seven percent and it's a safe place to buy from an educated salesman. And I don't have to order it online. I'm buying it right now. Do you find that to be true? That it's it's your approach to that person, and and so they don't feel insecure. They don't feel like they don't know anything and you're the know-it-all where you just take take down the levels a little bit and let them hang out? I mean, do you find that that works? It depends on the customer. Um, the younger generation, you notice how cleverly I avoided the word millennials? <laughs> the younger generation uh, is a lot about feelings and emotions. Yeah. How does this make you feel? You got to make them feel good. And we're a feel-good kind of place. Older people are a little more wary. You know, by older, I mean guys like you and me. They're a little bit more wary. They're, well, they've been burned once or twice in their, in their, in their lifespan. Yeah. So they want to make sure that their I's are dotted and their T's are crossed. You can't walk up and say, can I help you? That's the kiss of death. You never say, can I help you? Yeah. So an easy thing to say is, are you familiar with Takamini? Yeah. Hmm. Are you familiar with Alvarez? Are you do you know the do you know the story behind G and L? One of my favorite stories. Do you know the story about G and L? You know, and we like to say, well, G and L is what Fender would have grown up into had Leo not sold the company back in sixty five. Yeah. Fender would have grown up in that B G and L. But he sold it, so now we got G and L. So you can have nineteen sixty five technology or you can have twenty nineteen technology. Please take your pick. Yeah. My words, not G and L's. Yeah. And we phrase it a little different, but a lot of people still don't know the story. If you make it short enough, you can keep their interest, and they're pretty impressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can go buy some other brand, or they can buy this brand, and we never demean any other brand. That's one thing that just drives me nuts. I agree. Never, I agree. never demean another brand. There's a place in our market for everything. It's a big market, a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, I think the MI industry is like, what, a little over $2 billion a year? Oh, yeah. Revenue. There's room for everybody, okay? Uh, I just want to make my space in the industry a little bit larger. Yeah. So I'll tell people, yeah, those are really good guitars, but if you'd like to have this feature, it's only on these guitars. Yeah. Or it's only on this keyboard. Uh, it's only on this bass. It's only on this amplifier. And I love making people happy. If nothing else, i got a bowl of hard candy on the counter and they pick up a butterscotch before they leave. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that does I sound love good. <laughs> and they say, oh, I avoid sweets. I pick up some and I drop it in a purse. I'll go, that's for your grandkids. There you yeah. go. Oh, okay. Yeah. They don't want to eat sweets, but they don't mind giving them to their grandkids. Yeah, that's no, right. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. <laughs> well, Alan, we've got to wind down to respect of, of, of your time. And uh, we really appreciate uh, you coming on here. We didn't get through 
probably half of what we wanted to. So that means we need to have you back at a later the time. Conversation. Uh, maybe, I don't know, during Summer NAM show, we could do a face-to-face in the studio. That would be fun. I want to do a roundtable. And I think a roundtable of retailers would be awesome. And I'd like you in on that. So we may, we may schedule something like that in the future. But again, uh, in closing, give everybody uh, your store website if you have it or how to get a hold of your store uh, IMSO and the website, uh, and okay. any other information you want to give out. Again, you, you answer a lot of great questions. We're not done with you yet. No, we're going to come back and revisit you. And, uh, uh, again, we're going to spend more time with you and ask, answer okay. or ask you a bunch of questions, but we really appreciate your time today. So give us your, uh, uh websites. Sure. If you want to join or you find out more about IMSO, the website's real simple, Music store owners.com as plural okay. music store owners.com if you want to holler at me call me on the phone and you know tell me i don't know anything and i really <laughs> should go back to bagging groceries yeah i'd love to hear that some days it's backstage music.com awesome. backstage music.com hey alan <laughs> uh, before we go we have to we have to mention uh, you, you write an article what is it every oh, yeah. month yeah. Tell us where you write your article and what it's about, because I read it every month and I enjoy it. So tell everybody where they can read it. Uh, the trade journal is called Music and Sound Retailer. Okay. Brian Burke is the editor. Yeah. And uh, he makes me sound moderately not as dumb as I really am. No, <laughs> it's a good article. I really enjoy it. Write an article every month, and uh, you know the the topics are very wide ranging, yes. but they all deal with the reality of living in the music instrument retail world. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's about band instrument rentals. Sometimes it's about uh, dealing with employees. Sometimes it's about dealing with difficult customers, uh, customer service, yeah. uh, pricing, just different things. But they're all topics that are uh, they're either near and dear to our hearts or they create fear and loathing. It sure. depends on what the topic is. Gotcha. But I love it. I read it every month, and I think it's a, I think it's a great article, so I'm glad, you, I'm glad we brought that up. But again, you and my, you and my wife do have a lot in common. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool, yeah. Alan. We appreciate you again. We're going to touch base later in the year. We yeah. need to do this again. We Absolutely. have a whole bunch of other stuff we need to talk about. But thank you very much for your support. We appreciate you. And, mm-hmm. and I know we'll talk here real soon. Richard, I just can't both of you and I, both you guys, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking time to include me in your uh, broadcast. Um, Absolutely. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. I know you put a lot of time into this. Y'all started planning this weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, didn't think better of it and back out. And I appreciate that. <laughs> Anytime you'd like to have me, I'd be more than glad to participate. Man, that'd be great. Oh, uh, can I throw in one plug? Absolutely. There's a joint in uh, Franklin, you know. Tennessee called MIRC. Oh, mm. I've Where heard of that so place. Talk about blowing up your skirt. Yeah. <laughs> we we have sold a lot of instruments from MIRC. Uh, this great stuff. It's good margins. The big thing is it's not the same old, same old. Yeah. You've always got something different. Uh, Richard, I know that you're driving the bus there, and uh, I appreciate all the things you've done for us over the years. We have stocked and sold MIR, MIRC product. Uh, it's great. Uh you couldn't ask for a better bunch of guys. Yeah. We've actually got a custom <laughs> a custom uh Epiphone Les Paul hanging on the wall with our logo on it that was done in y'all's uh yes. paint shop. I forgot about Man. that. Yeah, that was years back. I forgot but it all hangs about there that. with an M I R C certificate of authenticity. Yeah. That thing's probably worth at least a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we redo our insurance, we're adding it as a ride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <exactly. laughs> but you do all this without mentioning your own business, and I wanted to throw that in for wow. the tail end because it is a great operation, and music store owners need to check out MIRC. Uh, it may not fit what you do, but if it does, there's money there to be made. Yeah, well, absolutely. We, we, we appreciate that, Alan. We appreciate that. So, again, we're going to do it again. We're not done with you yet. So uh, uh, we'll contact you uh, here in the near future. And, again, we appreciate you, and thanks for your time. 
Thank you, guys. Hope All you right. have a great rest of your month. Absolutely. Yeah, you too. Absolutely. We'll see you. Absolutely, Alan. Have a great day right, and a great then. week. All right. Well, hey, we just had a great conversation with Alan McBroom from Backstage Music. Yes. And uh, hey, man, what'd you think? He 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 definitely had a lot of a lot to say, a lot of experience, a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. he does have a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. I love Alan. He talks mm-hmm. uh, very well. He's got a lot of experience. I could I could listen to him for hours yeah. personally. Uh, we did not get through half of what we wanted <laughs> to, even probably a quarter, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. A lot of times we have a, a framed out conversation. Yeah. We know we're not going to get to the end of it, and if we don't get to the end of it, that's a good sign. Yeah. Uh, with him, we didn't. He gave us a lot of information. So uh, anybody out there that's a brick and mortar store mm-hmm. that's struggling does feels like they don't have yeah. anywhere to go. He made it very, very clear to go to the independent music store owners website and be part of them. It's a great place. It's a great community. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of good information on there. Um, we're going to have Alan back. We have yeah, to. I think we need to have him back. We didn't even get to talking about some of the details of just daily operations, but no. he had a lot of great ideas that people need to think about. We've done multiple yes. episodes in the past talking about, and we've talked about some of his ideas. That's too. right. That we have to, well, and Gordy's, I, I said well, in there, uh, I can't believe I, Gordy and, and Alan, I, I gave credit to Alan. I should have gave it to Gordy, but they both do it. Yeah. And right. that's a swap meet, which I yeah. think is a brilliant idea. You have to get a picture of Gordy and put him up on the screen or something. Yeah. Me in, yeah, you know about that, but but you or know not. I thought yeah. I, you know but but he's at least contributing to the conversation that people, whether it was years ago or even now, man, you have to be doing stuff. You have to think to not just survive, yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you want yeah. to thrive, you, you you've constantly got to be, be moving. You got to be thinking about things right. to do. You got to think, what can I do? How can I make things mm-hmm. exciting? How can I bring customers in here? Because uh, so often people want to whine and cry about things instead yeah. of do something. We didn't get to talk about it, but for me personally. Uh, an, a way to always attract people into your store is food. Yeah. Maybe that's just because we're in the South and we always think about food. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he had some great ideas. I loved it. I can't wait to do another one. With yeah, him. yeah. I think it'd be really good. So I thought it was interesting too. You know, I mean, in this day and age, the whole returns thing. I realize we have the Amazon effect. People yes. think they yes. can return everything. People think they get it everything in two day shipping. Yeah. So I think Alan's approach to the whole return thing it's refreshing. It's a, it's a good well, and it's, it makes for good conversation. Yeah, and we Whether didn't bring it up, it and, not, and I don't but, mean. This as a negative but because of his age he's a little bit older sometimes people they go they put their feet in their sand and go we're not doing that we haven't done it for 20 years why are we going to do it now yeah he very very much is embracing current things he talked about the phones people walk in and they look things up instead of chasing them away Mm -hmm. he brings them in he invites them to take pictures of tags and information that he has because his store logos on it so when they go back and look they're going to see a backstage music on it great idea yeah. yeah, great idea. And then actually, I have to admit, there for a little bit, I, a little bit, I checked out for a bit and, and stopped listening when he refer, referenced us all as the same age. Well, and no, I, was I just think like, he was pointing that at uh, me, uh, and then I, I, was I, I almost, included in that. No, 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 no. no. I <laughs> well, think I was he was talking like, about me, and I didn't know if I should get offended or yeah, not. I was like, or I think I, I need to say like, something. Maybe I need to wash that gray right out of my hair or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Seriously, but oh, well, you got yeah. more gray than I do. I, well, I well do. you got more hair than I, I do. Got, but so. man, I, t- I turned forty-four next month. He's you know he's sixty-two, and he said, "Well, I turned 49. 49? Oh my god! Yeah, well, but but still, he said so. You know, he's just like, hey, when people are you know our age, and I was like, hold on a second in here <laughs> well i think he was I, I i'm taking that as he was being kind yeah. and wanted to include us okay well okay well include us Either that or he wanted to feel younger <laughs> that's right you know that's he's what just it is. like i'm in my 40s yeah can't you tell yeah but uh, anyways but you know i thought alan was good man i yeah. think um, um everybody needs to yeah this is one of these episodes that you can go back and re-listen to yes. i hope he I hope he shares this out there with a lot of the IMSO members. He does. You know, because he, I think it will obviously he, he's help. A, he's a wealth of information. He's yeah. not afraid to share stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's one of the reasons I wanted to have him on here. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I brought up, and we're going to wind down because we could talk for an hour and we don't need to, but I, I talked about uh, doing a round table maybe at the Summer Nam show. That's mm-hmm. something for the last couple of years I've been wanting to do. Yeah. I think we need to do it. We do I think need it would to be that. exciting to have him and other people and do a round table. We've got a lot of smart smart dealers uh, that are around Mm -hmm. us. Uh, it might even be fun to include a couple manufacturers with the dealers yeah. and have a conversation. That that 
Well, we'd have to so, have a fire extinguisher yeah. to kind of cool things. Would it be off. a round table or a blue cage? Like, what was the, I don't know. the old uh, WWF oh, when yeah, the blue yeah, cage yeah, came yeah, down yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. ceiling and oh, you yeah. couldn't get out and you were stuck in the ring with Andre the Giant? But oh yeah. Anyways, uh, no, I think uh, I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. I mean, if you ask, I I could think of ten people right now you could ask and they would be like, yes, please, kind of be a part of that. Yeah. So I think I think we need to do that, and I think getting a couple manufacturers would be fun. That's right. That's right. So, anyways, well, hey, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Man, if you guys enjoyed the episode, man, we appreciate it. Share it. Uh, obviously, go to the music retail yep. com and you can reference a lot of the other episodes that we yes. have actually talked about that were here. Uh, just uh, obviously, if you want any information on those episodes, you can email us at the music retail show at gmail.com. Uh, but man, we appreciate it. Join us on the next episode. And uh, as, as always, any feedback we can get from you. We'll cherish that and use that as well. We look forward to it. Thanks. The Music Retail Show.